Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's tutorial, I'll be doing a steady state thermal analysis of a car disk brake rotor. So this is our uh, geometry or you can say the model for the car disk brake rotor and uh, we will uh, basically apply some boundary conditions. So we will apply uh, 80 degree uh, centigrade of temperature load on the front faces. So this is our front face and we'll apply a convection load on inner faces so the inner faces are these ones the, the ones which i'm highlighting right now we'll apply uh, inner face uh, uh, convection load and then the inner face will be subjected to air and the, the ambient temperature will be 22 degrees for this one we'll uh, take the material as the default structural steel you can always uh, change the material maybe create your own material such as gray cast iron you can go for carbon carbon composite you can do different uh, material and then do the analysis all right now to make it a simple analysis i will use the default material which is structural steel all right so let's see how we proceed with the design uh, this analysis process so i have already done this what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna close my model and i'm gonna start another steady state thermal analysis so let's go for steady state thermal All right so i'll keep everything uh, as the same i'll drag my geometry to this geometry and then i will open my geometry all right so if you want to see what my uh, geometry or the profile for the rotor looks like i'll open my geometry from here so this is our uh, geometry which i have done in ansys design modeler you can do it in any other uh, cad design software also but uh, i'll let you see the dimensions so this is our sketch one and i have taken the unit as millimeter and if i can show you see these are the dimensions can so do display I can go for value so you can see all the values itself these are the values 80 from here 300 from here 100 then these small portions are 5 and 5 and this angle is 135 all right so this is the basic sketch then the another sketch that i have done is a t dia hole on this face and it is at a distance of 125 so you can do it very easily right you must be knowing how to do this kind of simple uh add modeling inside design modeler so these are the basic uh, sketch I have used pattern to give it for holes all right i'll close this for now and now we can go to the model tab directly so let's go to model cell double click and open it all right now we are in the model cell i can right click go for a symmetric view and zoom to fit so this is our uh, rotor and uh, the very first thing that we will do is go to units and make sure the units is mm kg so i'll go for metric mm kg newton this one because my geometry was made in millimeter so make sure these unit are also in millimeter all right now after that i can create a, a general mesh right click on mesh and go for generate mesh so i'll create a default mesh once I have the mesh, I can pretty much uh, Im improve my mesh because this is a default mesh and you won't be getting uh, correct results with this one. So let's go for the tail soft mesh and let's expand the sizing. And here I'm gonna uh, go for advanced sizing. So let's go for adaptive sizing no and then i can switch on the proximity 
I'll capture proximity. I can also define the proximity minimum size. So let's go for 4 mm and can go for maximum face size. So I can define maximum size also as 9 mm and element size as 8 mm. Then I can come to my mesh, generate mesh. Now this will give me a more uh, refined kind of mesh with more uh, number of elements and further increasing number of nodes. All right, so once we have refined our mesh, you can see the difference with the, this mesh and the default mesh that ANSYS gave us. It is more refined. In fact, on the uh, in the places where we have the holes, it's also perfectly uh, refined. All right, so this proximity is very important when you have a complex shape which has some holes in it, so that when uh, over the surface where it has holes, it knows that uh, we have to define the mesh accordingly all right so these these uh, proximity minimum size and maximum face size uh, that depends on your value so you can also change it and play with that values all right so once we have the mesh we are now going to apply the boundary condition so boundary condition we will apply from steady state thermal Let's put a temperature and we'll apply temperature. So on this face, and we are going to apply. We can also give uh, the magnitude of 80 degrees. All right. Now after that. You select your thermal you will see a graph which shows that there is a, this is our time so in one second the temperature rises from 22 to 80 degrees so this is your uh, tabular data which basically says that at uh, time 0 second we have a 22 degrees and at time 1 second we have a temperature of 80 degrees now let's apply some other boundary condition so let's go for convection let's select uh, these side faces i will use the control button to select all the three faces apply and in the values i will import so let's right click or you can say import temperature dependent and in this one we have already said that uh, we are going to apply air also so let's go for stagnant air horizontal and press ok so we'll get a graph like this which has all the values so temperature 1 and these are the coefficient which are by default stored inside our workbench after that See all the convection coefficient over here and the tabular data that we used for the convection. Okay, now let's go for solution. So I can go to solution, I can insert thermal temperature. I can select all the bodies, so let's select complete body geometry all bodies that's fine so this temperature will give me uh, will give me the uh, value on all the overall the of the body so over the entire body we will get the temperature right now to understand this temperature distribution uh, we have to insert more and more uh, temperature parameters at different regions. So maybe around here, 
maybe around here so depends on the complexity of the model so let's say you have a complex model so make sure you are utilizing more and more uh, temperature parameters to uh, at different regions of the model to evaluate them right let's go for another solution right click thermal temperature and this time i will let's say only on this only on one face not on the full body because we have already applied a temperature on full body so we don't need to do that now you can also apply more temperature let's say on this face and those face that's up to you after that let's go for solution right click solve all right so once it has calculated the solution i will click my temperature and you can see the, the value of maximum temperature so this this phase has the maximum value and if i see my temperature too we'll see kind of this and uh, it has a maximum value at that corner point and the maximum value is 79.78 whereas our temperature in the first scenario we have our uh, 80 as the maximum so if you remember we have applied our boundary condition on this face only so it makes sense that this face has higher uh, temperature right now this was all about temperature let's add few more um, thermal values so let's say I want to get a total heat flux. We'll select the entire body. Apply. And we can also introduce directional heat flux. And uh, by default, it will be x axis. You can have uh, you can uh, apply two more uh, directional heat flux maybe in y direction and z direction itself so that's up to you i will evaluate now and if i see my heat flux it looks like this whereas the directional heat flux is this So you can uh, determine the directional heat flux along y and z axis as well uh, as you can see in the directional heat flux detail i have orientation as x axis so it is giving me the value along the x axis if you apply you come and change it to y axis it will be changed accordingly also uh, total heat flux is maximum as you can see this total heat flux is maximum where the region is marked red so this is the region uh, where we have the maximum temperature so it also knows that the total heat flux will be maximum in that place and in the the total heat flux will be minimum where it is blue All right, so that's it with the steady state thermal analysis of a car disc brake rotor. Now you can obviously uh, do some more uh, analysis using different materials. So this was our analyst steel. You can maybe go for a gray cast iron, some other materials such as carbon composite. You can also go for different temperature so you can maybe do a few more temperature on this face to get the values right so yeah that's it for this tutorial i hope you guys like it and if you have any doubts with this one feel free to comment down below i'll see you guys in the next tutorial peace out